Welcome to another edition of The Greys of Westminster, Good, the Bad and the Ugly. Now today I'm going to show you what to look for when buying a manual focus film camera. This is an autofocus film camera but I'll get to that in a minute. When you're looking at buying a film camera, it's quite important to know whether or not it's working first. And some people don't know what to check for when they're in a shop or when they receive one from buying it online. What we look for first is cosmetics. Now, black cameras tend to show their wear and tear much faster than chrome finish cameras. So these are particularly nice examples, but a more worn example will have things like brassing, where the brass shows underneath the black paint, and a lot more cosmetic scratches. Uh, older cameras, like the F2, can withstand lots and lots of wear and tear. I mean, these cameras have taken literal bullets, so they will be able to withstand a lot of use. And if you see one that's a little bit more beaten up, it doesn't necessarily mean that it won't work. It just means that it's already had a very good serviceable life. So in terms of cosmetics, it's really down to personal preference more than anything. But when it comes to mechanics, that's very important. Because if you take a roll of film with a camera and it turns out that the shutter speeds are all wrong or the light seals haven't been checked or serviced, then you've ruined a film. So we're going to do a little close up here. The next thing you want to look at is the viewfinder. So some cameras don't have the eyepiece attached, this one does, but you want to look through there to make sure that there's no dirt or fungus, which does often grow if a camera has been kept in poor condition. So the front of the camera shows you the mirror. You can usually see when you look through whether or not there's any dirt or grime in there and if you pop a lens on then you'll also be able to see very clearly any flecks of dirt or whether the focusing screen is scratched. One of the things that we look for, which is very important, is the foam light seals and the light trappings. The first one is usually found up here. This is sometimes called a mirror baffle. It's actually where the mirror hits when it goes up and takes a picture. So if that's falling apart, when you touch it, it will just fall off in your hands um, and it needs to be replaced. Because it's made of foam, it is degradable. So every 10 years or so, they will need to be fixed up. I'm gonna show you the light trappings in the back of the camera because those are the important ones. If you have no light seals here and here, and they are really tiny. They're just tiny strips of foam built in there. Here again are the foam light seals. There's also the little strip there. The FM3A actually has one to hold the film canister in place here as well. While you've got the back open, you can look at the condition of the shutter blades, and with most cameras, you'll be able to see that they're operating like that. You also want to have a look at the film pressure plate and make sure that that is both there because sometimes people take them off and that it works. The next thing to check is that the shutter speeds are all correct and present. Sometimes with these cameras, this little dial can slip, which means that when you get to the end where it should say bulb, you're actually still taking pictures and, and the dial is a bit further around than it should be. Also, sometimes, the dial is in slightly wrong position, so different shutter speeds will correspond to uh, different numbers. So, here's bulb. That should stay open for as long as I keep my finger down. There we go. And then you've got the usual one second, half a second, and so on. And you can test through all the shutter speeds. If you're in a shop, you may not want to do that, but at least just make sure that the shutter speeds seem to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. With cameras like this, there are a lot more knobs and dials. So we've got things to change the, um, the ISO here, and we've also got an exposure compensation button here. Not every camera has this, but if they do, it's worth just checking that they work. And also, the self-timer, which is down here. So I've moved that dial, and now I'm going to take it. Ta-da! <laughs> so, so we know that works. One other thing that we check for is the light meter. I cannot show you that very easily because you have to look through the viewfinder. But if you're in a shop, please do make sure that the batteries have been inserted for you. Um, or if you've bought one online, put batteries, fresh batteries in there and then just check that the light meter is doing what it's supposed to. On an FM3A, the light meter is located on the left hand side of the viewfinder and it's literally a little black needle. And all that we do is set different shutter speeds and also then point the camera towards different sources of light to make sure that the needle is freely moving and that it's not stuck in one place and seems to be responding in the way that it should. 
We don't have a lot of bad cameras sitting around at Grazer Westminster, but I did want to make mention to cameras of this age because these bodies that were made between the 60s and 70s, although they were built like tanks, as in the case of Don McCullen's Nikon F, which literally stopped a bullet um, from killing him, uh, they do have some small idiosyncrasies. So the meter, which is located in the head on both Nikon Fs and F2s, have varying levels of reliability and it's, it is worth checking that the meter works but I would say that if you do end up using one of these cameras always have a backup meter or at least get familiar enough to know whether or not the meter is slightly off because due to the age of them sometimes parts wear out and they're just not available anymore. This is actually a really nice example of an F2, um, F2A which does have some cosmetic marks on it and mechanically and metering wise works perfectly but some people might say it's one of the bad side ones just because there's no parts left for them and if something were to happen to it you wouldn't be able to get it fixed. And now we are looking at the ugly. The F100 is actually a wonderful camera. Uh, it's an autofocus film camera, it will utilise all of Nikon's AFS G-type and earlier lenses, which is fantastic. This particular example hasn't had a very good life. As you can see, the button's fallen off the back, which is um, a little lock button. The camera also does not shoot in continuous. It takes one shot and that's as far as it gets, which is a bit of a shame. And also we discovered by loading film in it that it never advances past one shot. So that's pretty much all the things that could be wrong with a film camera that is wrong with this one. Cameras uh, that were made during this time period, including F60s, 70s, 80s, and F100s, and also some D70s and D100s, have a problem with the rubber where it degrades into a slightly sticky mess. This one is one of the best examples of an F100 I've seen. It has no stickiness at all. But if you are gonna buy a film camera with autofocus capabilities, it's worth just checking the rubber on the back of the camera. Usually the front grips are completely fine, but the back is the obvious problem. So that is an example of an ugly. There are uglier cam cameras out there. This is actually quite a nice example of an ugly camera. Um, but hopefully with that in mind, that gives you some tips on what to look for when buying a film camera. How's that?